With their six-foot-long, tube-shaped, scaleless bodies, electric eels look and move more like snakes than fish. Yet scientists classify electric eels as fish. Adding to the confusion, however, is that scientists do not classify electric eels as eels, but knife fish. But enough about the confusion. What about the electricity? How do electric eels produce electrical charges? Well, it's all in the design of the animal. This curious creature has three pairs of organs, six in all, which make up nearly its entire tail region, about 80% of its body. These organs are made up of about 6,000 electroplaques. Electroplaques are muscles arranged like batteries. These muscles don't contract like normal muscles. Instead, they give off electrical charges. At will, an electric eel can send signals from its brain through perfectly positioned nerves to its battery-like muscles. What's more, this eel can choose to produce a small current of electricity, or it can carry out a shock of up to 600 volts, enough to stun a horse. Electric eels use this electric current for a variety of reasons. They obviously use this ability for self-defense purposes. Who wants to bother a fish that can electrocute you? They use it in order to stun or kill their prey. They use it to communicate with other electric eels. Furthermore, since they normally live in slow-moving, murky rivers and streams of South America, scientists tell us electric eels can set their batteries on low and create an electromagnetic field that helps them navigate. With such an ability, they can detect underwater objects, including prey and predator. How can purely naturalistic evolutionary theory ever adequately explain a creature as extraordinary as the electric eel? How did the first electric eel evolve from a non-electric eel? How did all of the batteries of the first electric eel get put in precisely the right place in order to produce electricity after receiving signals from the animal's brain by way of special nerves? How can evolutionists logically explain the electric eel's ability to not shock itself whenever it produces electric charges? How would it have known it needed to evolve a special layer of fat or insulation around its body in order to protect itself from electric currents that it had never yet produced? And if the animal had not yet produced its special insulation, how would it have survived continued electrocutions without it? The only explanation that logically explains the first electric eel is the existence of a supernatural designer. The design argument for God's existence is an actual, logical argument. Anything that exhibits complex, functional design demands an intelligent designer. The electric eel exhibits complex, functional design. Therefore, it must have an intelligent designer. This argument for God is logically sound and observationally true. The simple fact is, to deny either premise of the design argument is to deny reality, while to deny the conclusion is to deny logic. Some act as if natural selection and random mutations over millions of years is all you need for amazingly designed living things. But such processes cannot create complex functional design from nothing. Such processes cannot change non-design into design, and they certainly do not and cannot change one kind of animal into another. The simple fact is, natural selection does not design anything. As one evolutionist admitted long ago, natural selection may explain the survival of the fittest, but it cannot explain the arrival of the fittest. It cannot logically explain the arrival of the very first fully functional electric eel. If you would like to know more about the design argument for the existence of God, visit us at apologeticspress.org. Consider our book, Does God Exist?, as well as our 92-page full-color hardback book for children titled Wonders of God's Creation.